Apple has been going on and on about Apple intelligence and how the new devices support it, but what is it? And what can it do now? I don't need to hear about how amazing it's gonna be in the future and how my life will be the best it's ever been. I wanna know what I can actually start using and what all it can do. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some features that are available now. A couple of them do require the 18.2 public beta, but that software is due out for everybody in December. Unless you're outside the US and then you pretty much get nothing until next year. So before we get into the different features, let's talk about what Apple Apple intelligence is. It is different from Google Assistant and Alexa. It is not meant to just be a smart speaker assistant. Apple intelligence is meant to give you a more personalized experience across all your devices. It works on Macs, iPhones, iPads. Since Apple intelligence is embedded across all of the operating systems, it will work across all different apps. And you're gonna see like with the writing tools, they're the same AI tools across any of the devices. With Alexa and Google Assistant, they're primarily a voice-driven assistant. They have limited integration with Android, uh, iOS, or any other operating system. Apple intelligence isn't about that uh, question-answer type of thing, although you can do that, but it's about making your experience across all your different Apple devices better and um, easier to access information. First thing we'll talk about are the Apple Intelligence writing tools. These tools are available across the operating system. For example, I have a blank note right here, and right at the top of the screen, there's that Apple Intelligence logo, and when I select that, if I had text selected, I could describe something I wanna change about it, you can proofread, you can rewrite something, you can also change the tone, which can be important. So for example, you have an email that you've typed up, and you don't want to send it because maybe Maybe it's not polite enough or corporate enough or whatever. So you can go in here and you can choose to go with a friendly response, a professional response, or a concise response. Some other features in here, which is great if you do get a bunch of emails or just a long-winded email, or even if you want to just summarize a bunch of text, say you copy and paste some text, you can choose the summary option. You can choose key features and it'll pull that out. You can choose list or tables. Now, if you don't want to write at all, let's uh, use the compose with chat GPT. Now what's cool, we'll actually use dictation. Write me an email to my boss, letting him know I'm sick and will probably be out for a week. Now let's send that composing an email up for me. Okay, I can rewrite it. I can make the email more formal, add a request for immediate instructions, include a note about remote work if possible, and see what it wrote. Hi boss, I hope the message finds you well. I want to inform you that I'm currently unwell and have been advised by a doctor to take some rest. As a result, I anticipate needing to be out of the office for about a week to recuperate properly. I will ensure that all of my work is up to date and will hand over any pending tasks to a colleague to ensure that it's no disruption. This is great. If there's anything urgent, please feel free to contact me via email. Now, if you are going to use this to write emails, don't leave hi boss's name or your name. Definitely remember to fill those out. Again, all these different writing tools are available on your Mac, on your iPad, or your iPhone. Next is Enhanced Siri. For all the Siri fans out there, Siri's gonna get uh, better. And for all the people who don't like Siri, Siri's gonna get better. I've actually noticed that in making requests, uh, there is a more natural sound of things, and I'm able to speak more natural. I find that if I do make a request, I'm able to correct things, and it will um, correct it appropriately. Overall, all uh, Siri seems more helpful as an assistant. Now there's a new look to Siri. If you call up Siri, it'll show you the glowing ring around it, and then you can make your request. And if you don't want to make a request with Siri, you can do a double tap on the bottom of the screen and it will bring Siri up. And then you could type in whatever request you want. And then it'll ask you whether you want to search the web for that, or if you want to use ChatGPT. Now with ChatGPT integration, it always gives you a heads up when it's 
sending information there. This next one is Image Playground. This is a beta feature and you do have to request access for it. What this allows you to do is to create images using text. This is not something I really see using that much. Uh, if anything, I would rather use OpenAI's Dolly. That can make all different kinds of images. It can make realistic looking things where when you prompt, when you try to make something realistic, you just end up with an animation with Image Playground. I wanted to see the difference between Image Playground and Dolly if you put in the same prompt. So I thought, uh, so what do I want to see? And uh, what popped into my head was a nun drop kicking a dinosaur. I don't know why. It's a little messed up in here. Anyways, this is the result, a more realistic version. Apple isn't as flexible with what you can create. Here's the same command. And Apple says, unable to use that description. So, not as cool. Let's see what a bear riding a unicorn through uh, the forest would look like. And you get the animation over here while you get something realistic. Or you can choose different styles over on Dolly. This is an 18.2 version software, so that will be out in December unless you use the public beta. Next is Genmoji. This is one of the ones I really don't see using. You can create emojis using text. Um, yeah, see, I feel like every emoji I'd want to make, Apple's probably not going to let me make it. I can think of a few emojis I would make for some of the comments I get on this channel. But anyways, you um, can type in descriptions. You could even take pictures of uh, photos of people you know or yourself and you can um, make uh, emojis off of them. Like here's Craig Wright and a unicorn. Yeah. That's fun. Again, this is 18.2 beta software that has it. Another feature that I'm liking is the notification summaries. System-wide, you can have notifications, so they're set up where it'll give you a summary of your notifications. If you get a bunch of different texts, it'll summarize those for you. If you have alerts, like in the case of uh, my Ring video doorbell and Ring cameras, if those go off, it'll give me a little summary of what that's about. Instead of having to sort through a bunch of notifications with Apple intelligence it kind of brings out the important information you would need next is priority mail uh, for all of us dealing with email and especially with all the junk email that I find comes through this feature is great it'll take the most important emails uh, maybe things that are time sensitive or uh, things Apple intelligence thinks you may need to respond to and it will put those at the top of the list so let's say you have an Amazon order coming in and it's shipped it'll just throw that on the top because who knows you might might be counting on that order. This is a nice feature to have so that the important stuff doesn't get buried behind a bunch of junk. Next feature is the Photos app enhancements where you can actually clean up photos and remove objects from photos within the Photos app. Uh, you can choose the cleanup option and it will analyze a photo and give you suggestions of things you may want to remove or you can choose cleanup and then you could just select the thing you want to remove and I think it works okay um, it does better with things that are pretty obvious to remove uh, but since it's removing something it has to put something in its place and that's where I think it's not quite as good as Google's AI yet for photos but it's a great place to start I like having the option now next feature is the chat GPT integration this is one that I was really surprised to see Apple announce that uh, which I think it's great it is a very cool feature because chat GPT GPT is is crazy good. So instead of Apple having to try to make their own version of that, when you make requests, uh, Apple will try to handle it on device, or it'll also grab information from ChatGPT. And when it does grab information, if it's anything, it'll let you know it's getting it from there, or it's going to send the request there. So if you do make a request to Siri and you don't get enough information and you ask for more, it'll let you know it's going to uh, ChatGPT. 
This is a game changer for Apple. You get the best AI out there at this point uh, paired up with Siri. The fact that you can access ChatGPT from pretty much any app is cool. And that leads to this next feature that I think is a very cool feature. Visual intelligence is great with the new capture button. You hold down on the capture button and it brings up the camera, but it's ready for visual intelligence. So let's grab this mouse right here. I will take a picture of the mouse and it's going to do a little scan. I hit ask and now it's searching. It's working with ChatGPT. This is a wireless computer mouse designed for ergonomic uses, enhancing comfort, blah, blah, blah. Tells me about it. Let's see what it says when I ask, how much is this mouse? Here's my answer. The Logitech MX Master 3, which resembles this mouse, typically costs around $99. That right there looked at the top of the mouse and guess what it was and did so correctly. That's pretty good for looking at a picture of the mouse. The example that really blew me away of using visual intelligence is when I took my wife's Kindle, which has a case, and this is an old Kindle, I took a picture of the back of the case and it told me which Kindle it was and which version from the back of a worn case. It is scary good. Next Apple intelligence feature is a new focus mode. With Apple intelligence, it uh, tries to avoid giving you notifications of things that are, aren't important. Maybe you don't need to know that you're getting a free Domino's pizza this week in the middle of your day. Apple intelligence focus mode tries to uh, weed out stuff you don't need to know about. But I use focus modes during the day. I have one for work so that it uh, gets rid of distractions and only allows notifications from certain apps. I have one for sleep uh, that it's only go going to basically give me notifications from Ring and security notifications or communication from family members. So as you can see, there's some great features available now. Let us know in the comments which ones you find interesting or if you've been using Apple Intelligence, which, which ones are your favorite features? Now, if you made it this far, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing for the next one. Next, check out this video over here. I, I, I'm, I'll be real with you. I don't know what video I'm putting here yet, but it's going to be good. Now, this video up here, this is the one YouTube thinks you're going to want to watch. Either one. See you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.